Good morning, folks. Another beautiful day out here in the woods. Going to take full advantage of it, do a bit of sawing here today. I've got a fresh deck of logs here. There's 20 of them there. Most are relatively small. I think the biggest one gets up around 9 inches and then probably down to 5 or 6 inches. So not the biggest things, but we'll make something out of nothing, that's for sure. These are all trees that came down in that ice storm, which you've heard me talk about many, many times. Now, I think there's about 20 of them. This will probably take me... Oh, by the time I get them cut up and stacked up, a few hours at the very least. And, uh, well, we'll be using the Clark Model 35038 for that task. And if you're not familiar with this, this is it. This is where it lives out here in the woods. Today I'm going to take you through something that I found out about it uh, when I was looking at buying it that really was different than what I had seen before in other debarkers. And so let's uh, move on up front, and I'll show you all about it. Well, here it is, the debarker. This was a must-have for a new sawmill for me, and the reason being is it extends the life of your blade. It keeps it sharper longer, which means I don't have to change out the blade for a sharp one as often. This uh, blade down here, which spins with that hydraulic motor, it's going to cut a groove in through the bark, in through any debris, dirt, and that sort of thing. And that's what's ultimately going to keep that blade cutting into fresh, clean wood at all times. Now, this has some carbide teeth on it, and these are reversible. And as I said, it uh, spins around with a hydraulic motor. Now the hydraulic motor, I can control the speed of that with this needle valve. And if we make our way up here, this piece which goes in and out, this is controlled with a hydraulic cylinder. And up at the control panel, I have a lever. And what that lever does is it allows me to bring that debarker in against the log as I start the cut. Now what keeps it moving in as the log moves, keep in mind a log's not perfectly straight, it, does all kinds of things, is a detent valve. So the detent valve on the controls allow me to bring the debarker in against the log when I start the cut, and then I press the lever all the way forward, and then it applies pressure against the log. So this, uh, this blade here will constantly follow the contours of the log, um, even if it goes narrower, or even if it goes wider. And so that's what's nice about this. Just so you know what I'm talking about, there's the debarker for the blade to start spinning. So the blade would be spinning there, in and out so currently it's in the in position and if i hold it in it goes to a detent and that keeps it in and so there's pressure being applied against the log now i can control the amount of pressure so that if it's putting too much pressure i can ease off if it's not applying enough pressure i can uh, increase it and so that's with that detent put it back to neutral and obviously if i wanted to bring the debarker back out of the way i just hold it back until it's out of the way and let go Turn the blade off, like so. So as I was saying, a debarker was a must-have for a new sawmill, and one of the things that made this debarker kind of unique compared to other sawmills that I had seen, and certainly made it a front-runner, was this. See this shoe here? You'll notice right now it's all the way out. Well, this shoe, it actually moves. It's adjustable. And so what that allows me to do is to adjust how much of that tooth protrudes into the log. If I'm cutting something like red pine, which doesn't really have thick bark, I can pull this out. Whereas if I'm cutting through really thick bark, I can push it all the way in. And we'll just push it all the way in here. Have a look there. You see the tooth sticking out? It sticks out more than it did previously. And so that's kind of nice. I can adjust that for whatever it is I'm cutting. Obviously right now it's all the way out, but if you bump it in, If you bump it in, you can uh, reduce that. And how I'm doing that, you probably won't be able to see that well, but there's actually a space I can get a wrench in there. Right there. And likewise on the other side, right in here. And so by loosening off those, those bolts, I can then adjust this to whatever thickness bark I need to cut through so I'm not cutting too deep or too shallow of a, uh, of a groove. So let's get the sawmill fired up. We'll get a few logs put up here. As you know, the lumber, the slab wood makes its way down this way. The newly constructed roller tables here. I'll push all the slabs to the right down into a bit of a pile and then I'll slide the lumber on the left onto the trailer. The lumber will then go off where it needs to. The slab wood I'll come back later and pick up with the log loader. Anyways, here we go.
Well, the log deck's empty again. That can only mean one thing. We've got a pile of lumber to put up, and well, after that's done, I'll probably be back out in the woods. As you can see, I got no shortage of logs, so I'll make my rounds, try to cherry pick the best ones, and get them back here and sawn into some lumber. Now, this unit right here, as I continue to learn more and more about it, it's starting to become even more second nature, controls that that is. While I'm up here, I might look like I'm really focused. That's because there's a lot of stuff going on here. There's the debarker, turning it on, in and out, up and down with the uh, with the controls for the sawmill. There's the set works, or forward and back, fast forward and back. You get the picture. Because there's a lot of stuff going on here, there's a lot of room to go fast. But there's also a lot of room for air, so i got to make sure that I'm learning things properly. Moving nice and slowly and getting a good workflow down. And one other thing I want to talk about is some of you might not be familiar with my sawmill or fully hydraulic sawmills like mine. This has an engine, obviously. There's a hydraulic pump up there, a tank, and that moves all the hydraulic fluid through some hoses, makes its way through some valves, over to cylinders and hydraulic motors. The hydraulic system on this controls all the features. Down and back, up and down, log lift, log turner, clamps, log stops, etc., etc. There's one exception, though, maybe two exceptions. One is there's 12-volt power running my lasers. There's also 12-volt power going to this, my computer set works. This one's made by Micron, and Micron Computer Setworks, even though this is a fully hydraulic sawmill, it does work with it by getting power from the battery, sending that power to hydraulic valves, opening and closing it, just like my other, my other controls would do. Now, you may not have been able to see the numbers when I was using it, but more or less what I'm doing with this is I'm setting the height, and that's a reference height, and then from it, I input different dimensions, and then every time I hit enter, it's going to go from that reference point down the dimension that I want for whatever board size I'm looking for. It also takes into account the kerf. And so instead of me having to do a little bit of scale work figuring, I can just hit enter after I get back from the previous cut and the saw head will automatically move down to the start of the next cut. Then I use my controls, hydraulic controls, go down the cut, come back, press enter again down the cut come back now with the set works as well you might have seen from time to time I'm using these buttons one is a bump up one's a bump down so I can use a bump up if I get to the end of the cut and I want to just get above the cut bring back the lumber or if I bump it a few times it'll go up high enough that I can go above the cut leaving the board there I don't have any presets yet but there are space for them presets would be like preset dimensions that you commonly saw and so you could just put that in there and then instead of me having to put in say inch and a half or inch and three quarters I could just hit my preset that I know is set up for that dimension and then every time I hit enter it drops down to the next cut including the kerf size anyways I better get back to work here I've got lots of work ahead of me as you know and so I better get the lumber where it's going get back over here bundle those slabs up and move them and then I'll be back out to the woods grabbing logs Hopefully if you did like this video, you give her the old like a -roo. you make sure you subscribe, and I see you next time. See you then.